Hello, this is Joel Toppin, and this is video number six on how to create Vassal modules. We've been talking in the last couple videos about how to create pieces, and I wanted to do one more very important thing about pieces here before we move on and show you some other uh, basic things on Vassal module creation, and that is to discuss uh, prototypes. What I've done here is I've made a few adjustments to the module in between our last video and now. I've gotten rid of the tabbed panel because it's really not necessary in this module. Instead, when you click on markers, I have a scrollable list here with a drought, and we raid red influence and turquoise influence uh, counters. And just a, a, just a sampling of counters that uh, it's not going to matter how many of these we have. If there's an infinite number of them, it's not a problem. Now, um, if I double click on drought, you'll see I've given it the delete trait, the clone trait, but let's say I need to add other traits to this, this piece, and then I need to create other pieces that have the same exact traits. That means every, every single piece that I create in here, I have to keep adding these traits into that game piece. If you've only got four pieces, that's not a big deal. But if you've got hundreds of them, for example, Battle for Normandy, there's like 2,400 counters, uh, that can be an arduous task. So how do you, how do you go about uh, speeding up the process? Well, the easiest way to do that is through a prototype. So let's create a prototype here. What I'm going to do here is I am going to remove all of the traits except the basic image from our game pieces here that we've created in the markers tray. So it's all you have in here is the basic image. All right. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a prototype. So if I go up here to the folder, it says game piece prototype definitions and right click on it. I can choose to add a definition. Let's do that now. Now, when you add a definition, it looks almost like you're creating a, a, a new game piece. Um, there's a name up here that we need to put in here. This is very important. You need to make sure you type the name carefully because you're going to need to refer to this name exactly later on. I'm going to call this one markers because game piece markers are going to be the game pieces that possess this per the, the particular traits I'm going to put in this prototype. So I'm going to call it markers. I'm going to add uh, delete functionality. I'm going to add clone functionality and see if there's anything else I need to put in. I think that's just it for now, but there's, there's maybe other functions I'll need to put into this. Uh, in fact, for now, let's just do this. Let's just put delete functionality in here. And we'll choose OK. Now we'll go back to our scrollable list. Ideally, you create the prototypes before you create the game pieces, OK? And then we go into our game piece. Let's, let's go ahead and I'm actually going to just delete these. All right. So all we have is a drought counter. I'm going to just go ahead and edit this. Now, in the available traits, uh, fifth from the top, you'll see prototype. We choose to add it. Now, remember what we call our prototype that has the, the delete functionality? It's called markers. So I'm going to call it markers. Uh, I do not believe it's case sensitive, but that's not a bad habit to be in. OK, so in this case, we called it markers with a capital M. That's just what I'm going to call it here. So I type it exactly the same as in the definitions folder. Choose OK. And OK here. And if I go up here and start a new game, I should, when I drag the drought piece out, right click on it. Yep, there it is. There's the delete functionality. All right. So that worked. Let's close the module here. In other words, what just happened here is whatever traits that we put in the prototype will also appear in every game piece that contains the prototype trait of the same name. Now that might sound like, well, isn't that like two steps to do one thing? Not exactly. Let's go ahead and create a few more pieces and I'll show you the beauty of this particular tool. All right, let's right click on the scroll list. We'll choose to add a single piece. The basic piece, we're going to call it, um, let's go find the, the graphic for it. We're going to use an enemy raid counter image. Choose that. We'll give it the name enemy raid. Click OK. Now I'm going to show you some, another cool uh, tool that you can do in Vassal. I'm just going to select OK for now. I'm going to go back to the drought counter. In the current traits panel, I'm going to select the prototype markers. Over on the right, you'll see there's a button that says copy. OK, 
Control C, Command C, none of those uh, keyboard shortcuts will work here, only this button. So I select it, choose Copy, click OK. If I go down here to the new counter we just made, you'll see the Paste button is enabled. And when I paste, it puts the prototype in there. So it saves me the trouble of typing. I'll click OK. I'm going to right click on the scrollable list and add a new piece again. Basic piece, double click for image. I'm going to use the red basket. I'm going to call this one red influence. Click OK. Paste in that markers uh, prototype. All right, one more. I'll right click, single piece, double click. And this is basically how you're going to be putting uh, counters in your module. It's just a very repetitive in a lot of cases. And I'm going to call this one uh, turquoise uh, influence. Click OK. Paste. And OK. Now, all of those pieces, when I go over up, up to here and I click File, New, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, now since I've done all this and I haven't saved and exited, the, the scrollable list is a little screwed up, but we still see enough here to, to move along. Um, doesn't matter which of these I drag onto the map, Red Influence, Drought, Enemy Raid, any of these that I right click on, you'll see that it has that delete functionality has been added to it. So that's good. Close the module down. Now here's the beauty of this particular prototype tool. I'm going to go ahead and save the module, exit, re-enter, so everything's nice and clean. I want you to be able to see this really clearly. All right, go up to File, New Game. All right, markers, they're all in there. Good. All right. Let's say I want to add functionality that all of these counters here, I forgot, they, they need to be clonable. Okay, so. If I had not used a prototype, I would have to go into the pieces tray, into the scroll list, double click on each of these, and add the, the clone functionality to each of these individually one at a time. Doesn't sound like a lot of trouble with four counters, but if you got a couple hundred and later on you're like, snap, I forgot to add, I, I need to have this trait on all of those, you're talking maybe an hour's worth of work just repetitively adding traits to counters one at a time. If, however, you have had, you've built prototypes, you planned your work well, and you have a prototype that's common to that group of pieces, you all you have to do is go into the prototype folder. I'll double click on that markers prototype definition. I add clone to the list. Just leave the default settings there. Click OK. And I go over here to my game piece palette, and I'll check the turquoise influence counter, drag it on the map. I'll right click on it and there's my clone functionality. In fact, all of these simultaneously just got that new functionality. That's the beauty of prototypes. Use them often. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself, uh, anytime you need to do an edit or add just the simplest thing, you're going to find it much more time consuming than if you had planned your work well in the beginning and built prototypes around your module. So very early in the process, it's a good idea to segregate your counters and figure out which ones are going to fit into which groups and make a prototype for each of them. So let's say I'm doing a module here on uh, the American Civil War. Uh, I might make a prototype for the Union pieces, a prototype for Confederate pieces, a prototype to uh, markers that are generic to both sides, any markers that any kind of game pieces that are going to have the exact same traits, uh, it's helpful to create one prototype for that particular module. You can also nest the prototypes. For example, if I uh, go into markers, I could actually create a prototype within a prototype uh, that gets complicated, but you can also do that. So any prototypes that you that you define here. If I add a new prototype and call this one um, test, we'll just call it test. It's an experimental thing. I could actually go into the markers definition and add the prototype test. And everything that's in test will now be a part of every piece that has the markers trait. So you, you can actually nest the prototypes. It's a very powerful tool to help you get around the fact that you got to put a lot of game pieces in a particular uh, Vassal module. So that's what prototypes are all about. Again, it's a really, really useful tool. 
Let's go back to our module window here. I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the screen a little bit bigger so we can uh, see what we're working with. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. There's our game pieces. Um, I want you to see the uh, up here in the uh, chat bar. This is the chat bar. Okay, you can type up here. You're used to messaging up here, up in here when you're playing a game online or through a, a log file. You'll notice that up here, whenever you move a piece, it, it uses the name of the piece and it tells it where it's moving from and where it's moving to. But you'll notice all it says is off board, off board, off board. How do you fix that? That's what I'm going to talk about in our next video.